Dude, honestly, I think the Canon EOS M6 is probably the most underrated vlogging camera out there. Seriously, voiceover guy. I think for people who are beginning to try to make YouTube videos, people who are just starting out with YouTube videos, taking photos and all that, I think the Canon EOS M6 is just overlooked, not talked about enough as a budget option. Yes, it is an older camera, but because it is an old camera, there's a lot of things going for it that don't get talked about and get overlooked, which as a result makes it really, really cheap. Let, let, me, let me explain. Okay, so why do I think the Canon EOS M6 is such a good vlogging camera? Well, honestly, because it is so cheap. And what you get for that cheap ass price is a lot of performance and a, and a lot of value. Okay, now before I start this video, if you have any questions you want to ask me, join my Discord and Instagram. It will usually enter you into the next giveaway I do in the future, maybe in a month or so. And also, there's a lot of people on my Discord who are happy to help. Anyway, let's talk about the Canon EOS M6. I think there's a lot of go things going for this camera. And if you look at the tech specs, you actually realize it actually has quite an impressive spec list. Starting with the internals, you've got the sensor. It's a 26 megapixel APS-C sensor from Canon. And this is not just any random cheap APS-C sensor from the T7i or something. This is an ADD sensor in there. And if you know anything about the Canon ADD, you know that this camera is extremely popular among people who are for a DSLR but aren't willing to go all the way with full frame pro level DSLR. ADD is a camera that many people consider to be an excellent value uh, and it is a really really good camera for both videos and stills. If you're talking videos and YouTube videos in particular, I think there's one channel that I'm sure all of you would know that used that camera to literally build up that channel. It's Casey Neistat. And he basically built his channel on 70D and 80D footage. So if it's if this camera's got that sensor, I think you'd be, it, it's safe to say that it's enough for you if you're just trying to make YouTube videos. Another thing about this sensor is that it's excellent for stills. It's an 80D sensor, so there's that. And unlike the 80D, this camera is extremely, extremely compact. It's tiny. Because of the mirrorless build, mirrorless form factor, it's really, really small. And with the 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens that it comes with, you have a very compact, cheap, easy to carry with you vlogging setup that is just in this tiny, wonderful little package. And honestly, that is extremely, extremely appealing to me for making YouTube videos, because I think that's probably most of the reason why y'all clicked on this video because of how it's titled. So let's focus on that. What's this, what's so nice about this camera to make YouTube videos? As I said before, it's got an ADD sensor and it's a sensor that has been used to build thousands, if not hundreds of YouTube channels. And that means that the quality you get from that sensor that sensor is definitely, definitely enough. If you're worried, oh, it doesn't have 4K, it's not sh gonna be sharp enough, that, that's BS. This is gonna give you plenty good footage that is gonna be more than enough to build up your YouTube channel. a bee in my room. Please don't sting me. I'll be back. I haven't removed the bee trap, but he seems to have stopped spazzing out, so that's fine. Second thing, it's got a mic jack. I think that's one of the most essential things for making YouTube videos in a camera. Audio quality 
it's probably the most important thing in making videos, films, whatever. And having a mic jack means you can actually plug an external mic in there and get decent or not good quality audio straight burnt into your footage very, very easily. There is, however, certain issues with using an external mic with this particular camera, the M6, but I'll talk about that later when I talk about the drawbacks, disadvantages, and rigging it out for YouTube. Mic jack, awesome. The next thing is you've got excellent Canon colors. Sure, it's only got a terrible bit rate of 30 megabits per second, which is un rather unfortunate. So you don't, you shouldn't be expecting to do much, if not any color grading at all, because that footage will fall apart. But you can shoot just the standard default neutral profile on this camera and expect to get great results out of it because it's a Canon camera. Canon has excellent colors straight out of the box. So with this camera, you can just shoot, record, edit, not worry about colors, at least at this early point in your YouTube career, and just upload it and it will still look pretty darn good. Of course, dynamic range is an issue due to the fact that this is an older sensor and the bitrate kind of sucks, but there's not much you can do. Uh, but I'll talk more about that in the disadvantages section later on. Record, edit, upload. No worries about color grading or all that. And I think that is excellent. And the next thing that is excellent on the M6 for YouTube is dual pixel autofocus. It's crazy amazing. You know, I shot on Sony a7 III, then the a6500, then the X-T3. And these cameras have pretty good autofocus. The a7 III in particular, excellent autofocus. But the ability to just tap on something and have it track perfectly and not worry at all. That's kind of cool. And that's kind of awesome. Dual pixel autofocus is phenomenal. And this level of autofocus, you don't really get at a camera of this price, period. You really can't find autofocus that's as good as the M6's autofocus at this price. And speaking of price, that's the next huge advantage for YouTube. This camera is crazy cheap. And if you're just trying to start out a YouTube channel, chances are you don't want to be investing a lot of money into your YouTube channel. So this camera coming in at only three to $400 second hand with a kit lens, I can actually bought this 400 Singapore dollars brand new in box unopened with a kit lens at that price. Oh, the bee is back. Just chill out, bee. Just stay there. Yeah, but I bought this 300 to 400 Singapore dollars brand new in box. You can get that about, you can usually get it at the same price second hand or even cheaper second hand uh, depending on your luck and your bargain hunting skills. That bee is really annoying. Okay, but anyway, at that price, you pretty much can't find a camera with everything I've talked about before and all the advantages that I'm gonna talk about from now at that price. And that price makes it so compelling of a YouTube beginner option because you don't wanna be spending so much money investing in a channel because you never know if it might succeed or it might not, so that's that. And you just simply can't get the autofocus and the color and the mic jack and the, the compact build that it has at this price range, which is insane. And the next thing that's really good about this camera, it's got 1080p 60fps. Now it's not super impressive for slow-mo per se, but you can still slow down some footage and get some nice smooth b-roll or something if you are into that kind of editing style. The Fujifilm X-T3 has 4K60 and a lot of my B-roll is shot handheld and then slowed down from 60fps to 40fps and as a result, I get a lot of smooth B-roll without having to set up tripods and motorpods all the time and I think 60fps is severely underrated. Uh, people always want 120, but 60 really is good enough. The size of this camera is wonderful. I think the fact that it's such a small, compact camera makes it such a compelling option for vlogging because it encourages you to shoot. It's tiny and small. You can fit it in your backpack, no problems at all. The battery it has, it's small, but it lasts a pretty good amount of time. And uh, you know, you just are encouraged to bring it out. You don't feel discouraged to shoot with it because A, it's tiny. So you don't really worry about bringing it around. And B, because it's small, it's much more conspicuous. So you're more willing to shoot it out and shoot videos with it out in public. And the willingness to shoot wherever you go, I think is what differentiates good vloggers from bad vloggers. And one more thing, it's got the flip screen. You know, it's so important to have a flip screen when you're trying to do vlogging, especially when you're starting out. For my style of shooting, I can actually value less. I can value flip screens less because I'm shooting in a studio. I can set up my camera just right, set up the lights just right, set up the lens just right. And I know I'm in frame roughly by standing in this exact spot right here. But if you're vlogging, you're on the go, you have no time to 
turn around, chimp, check the back of your screen before you continue vlogging. No, so having that flip screen is essential. Of course, it's not the flip side screen like the EOS M50 or the DSLRs from Canon or the A7S III, something like that. But hey, at least it's still a flip up screen. You can still see yourself and you can still tap and control. And also the controls are insanely easy to use. So if you are a beginner, changing settings, understanding everything, it's very easy because it's very well laid out. But frankly, there shouldn't be much settings that you need to change to shoot video on this. The only thing I would do if I was a beginner and I bought this camera for vlogging would be to learn what shutter speed, shutter angle, and ISO means, and leave everything else in auto. Auto white balance, auto colors, and usually, the footage you, you you can get still will turn out amazing. Let me just let me just sidetrack the things a little bit and talk about how good this camera actually is for stills. As I talked about before, it's an ADD sensor, and the ADD can produce excellent images. It was a well-reviewed DSLR for taking still photos. And if you wanted to take still photos on your holiday alongside YouTube videos, you don't have to bring any other camera. This camera would do just fine. You get the idea. But the Canon M6 is a great camera for stills as well. If you want it, you can buy the electronic viewfinder that slides into the hot shoe if you really need an EVF, although that will impede your screen from flipping up. You know, even just using the back screen, you can take excellent still photos. You can shoot in RAW, JPEGs, and you can get excellent images out of it. I shot some of my favorite photos on the Canon 70D, and knowing how the 80D was a marked improvement in still performance over the 70D, I'm sure that you can get excellent images out of this. I haven't really shot with it. Maybe one day there's a POV street photography video for me with the Canon EOS M6. Oh, and one more thing that's excellent about this Canon M6, there are great budget options for lenses. Sure, it doesn't have a lot, a lot of lenses because it's not a pro system, but I need to point out the fact that if you're buying a camera system, buying a camera, don't worry about how many lenses there are and how good those lenses are. Worry about the lenses that you actually are thinking about buying. Don't think about whether it has the lenses that suit your needs and how good it does that job. So if you just look at this camera, the USM system, if you're just talking native lenses, that actually are quite good vlogging options. You've got the kit lens, which is cheap or free which is insanely good, quite wide, wide enough for vlogging. It can zoom to 45 if you want to have a little bit of extra reach, which is nice. But apart from the kit lens, you've got the 1122, which is a nice wide angle for vlogging if you really need a wide angle. But you've got a 22 millimeter prime that's pretty cheap from Canon. That's very nice for blurry background if you want that. And you've got the Sigma 16 mm f1.4, which isn't stabilized, unfortunately. You have the 16 f1.4 from Sigma, which is excellent. You have the series of f1.4 primes from Sigma. And then you can also slap a ES to EOS M adapter on there and then suddenly you'll be good. You can mount every single Canon EF lens you can buy or find on this camera if you really felt limited by lens options, which makes this a lot more compelling for YouTube videos, still photography, beginner stuff, or even more serious stuff. Let's talk about the disadvantages of this setup system rig. Well, first off, it's the fact that the flip up screen gets blocked if you have a microphone in the hot shoe mount. So you're gonna need some sort of doodad so that you can mount the microphone to the side or to the bottom or something like that. And I've got this thing from UU Rig, I think, or Ulanzi. It's called the PT7, I think, and it allows me to mount the microphone to a cold shoe that's attached to the bottom tread mount rather than the top so that the microphone can have its own space on the side, plug into the mic jack, and the screen can still flip out off of that. It's a cheap $5 solution and it gets the job done. It does make the whole thing a little bit bulkier, but uh, it's something that you would really want to get with this camera to fix this flip up screen issue because you really need that flip up screen and you also really need the microphone. And then the uh, second disadvantage of this camera, it doesn't have 4K, it doesn't have 120p and uh, the Sony cameras, you know, the newer ones at least, all do that. I think that's overrated unless you're trying to get a professional look like me shooting 4K, then okay, I get it. If you wanted a camera with the level of autofocus it has and the colors it has and the flip screen and 4K, you're gonna be spending quite a little bit more. The only camera that I think can can be an equivalent of this and have 4K and not cost a fortune is the Fujifilm X-T200 and 
that is quite a bit more expensive than this camera so or even the m6 mark ii essentially this camera does not have 4k k is not that important if you're just doing youtube content another disadvantage of this camera is that um its battery life isn't phenomenal it can last three to four hours of shooting so that's good enough for most people but if you're going on holiday the bee is on top of me now it's really scary if you're going on holiday make sure you bring along buy some extra batteries and a battery charger that charges by USB rather than those rinky dink chargers that plug straight into the wall. But apart from that, I really can't see much of an issue anywhere else with this camera for YouTube videos, for making vlogs, or even studio photography. Once you fix those issues that I talked about, you'll be fine. So let's talk about how I rig this camera up for YouTube vlogging. Well, it's pretty simple. I use that Ulanzi PG7 thing to, it's a cold shoe mount on the side basically. And I mount my microphone to the right of the camera so that it's separate from the top hot shoe. I plug that microphone straight into the mic jack of the camera. And then I put it on a nice vlog tripod. Now this one is the Pro Photo UFO 2 vlog tripod. It is like a budget gorilla pod and I found that it's actually pretty good of an option. So you might want to consider getting this instead of a really expensive gorilla pod. But I did drop my camera already with this. I don't think a gorilla pod would have prevented that though. Just be careful. So for me personally, I've been using the kit 15 to 45 millimeter lens and I find that it is wide enough for most scenarios so it doesn't really matter but uh, if I wa was to go from scratch if I was to have a little bit more money I would sell this 15 to 45 and, and buy 11 to 22 because I really like the wide angle look for vlogging because it gives a lot of context to where I am and when it comes to vlogging I think that's very important you really want to get as much of your background into the scene so that people can viewers can feel like they're part of that place with you they're coming along with you rather than just focusing on your face so wide angles is my recommendation if you were to buy a lens for this setup okay so that's how I rig it those are the advantages disadvantages I hope I made a pretty convincing argument as to why the Canon EOS M6 is an underrated YouTube vlog camera and you should consider it if you are a beginner you're just starting out and making videos and all that I already said I love it this camera for vlogging I think it's underrated it's an excellent beginner vlog setup camera it is cheap it is a great option for beginners but I think people who are non beginners might actually want this as well uh, because this camera has a lot of things packed into a very tiny package and that fact that it's such a tiny package I think is a great great advantage for me because having a small camera like this encourages you to go to shoot it's easy to bring along with you it's not a concern it's not a hassle and the more you're encouraged to shoot outside the more you're encouraged to bring a camera along you wherever you go the more content the better content you're going to produce and the more cool things you're going to capture and the more cool things you capture the more likely you're going to be able to build your youtube channel up of course maybe you're just doing beauty videos and you're not vlogging but if but even then having a small camera makes it less of a hassle makes it more fun and makes for more content to be made by you who knows you might be the next casey nice and having a camera that is easy to shoot with and fun to shoot with might allow you to capture that viral moment that blasts your channel to the rocket sphere. I think the M6 is one of those cameras. Hope you guys found it helpful, enjoyed it, anything, you know, if you just had a good time watching this video, please like and subscribe the standard YouTube drill. I'm mortally terrified by that bee flying around my room. I think I'm going to get stung in like 10 seconds. So I'm going to end this video here. I, I'm going to head out. So see you soon. Join my Discord and Instagram. All right.